feel good about this call. Yeah, well, you should. It's a great piece. The source is questionable. It's too soon to run with it. Yeah, unfortunately, this is how the business works these days, Richard. Passing off rumor as truth, destroying careers. I'm tired of being an assassin. Look, Richard, the 24-7 news channels and the blogs are killing us. It's either keep pace or die. Carl, just give me another day to get more substantiation. Sorry. Got a deadline. KFCH has just learned that Dan Jankowski, the chief supervisor of the city's comptroller office, is dead. Jankowski was the subject of a story by Richard Kern in this evening's Standard Bearer, accusing higher-ups in the comptroller's office of misappropriating funds. The initial word from a Tulsa Police Department spokesperson is that it's a possible suicide. If I could go back in time Stand at your doorway If I could turn back the pages Rewrite my words Find a little courage If I could hold your hand Tell you just how much you mean Where's my editorial? Ah, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, look at you. You know, you broke my heart when you left me for the New Hampshire Clarion. Ah, oh, come on, Dale. It was 19. Buck 75 an hour increase was a lot of money then. Hmm. Lost track of you after the Herald. What happened? Ah, oh, hey, the Pulitzer Prize. Where'd I put that? Must have left it in my other pants. Yeah. The town hasn't changed? Yeah, well, neither is the news. I'm just about to proofread the story on this year's pie-eating contest. Wow. They're still doing that, huh? Who did the air let you cover it? You tried to do an expose on the winner for eating half-filled pies. <laughs> you were one hard case, kid. Well, that was then. So what brings you back to Maybury, Opie? Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I just lost Edie Brewer to motherhood, so I'm in the market for a reporter, especially above your caliber. Oh, thanks, Dale, but I'm not sure how long I'm going to stick around town. Good, you can have your old office. I just went on a coffee run here. Thanks. We kind of met earlier at the office. Right. 
Richard Kerm. I know. Welcome aboard. Wow, word travels fast. Not really sure if I'm staying. I'm editor of the classifieds. I remember doing the classifieds. It's promoted from the mailroom. I know, you were 16. Copywriter at 17, then the youngest copywriter at the New Hampshire Clarion, then the youngest journalist at the Clarion. Notice I said journalist, not reporter. I hate reporter. Yeah, me too. Youngest writer at the Times, quit. A year at the Boston Gazette, quit. Vancouver Post, quit. Rochester American, quit. Seems to be a theme happening here. Sacramento Bee, fired. Whoa, how did that get in there? Tulsa Standard Bearer quit, and that brings us back to Doe. How do you know all this? When you quit high school to go into the newspaper business, it was a book that influenced you. All the President's Men. About an inch away from being freaked out. Thanks for the coffee. And when you left here for New Hampshire, you promised Jackie you'd marry her as soon as you got your first raise. But you never came back. Okay, this isn't funny anymore. She's still over at the restaurant, by the way. Who are you, really? I've got coffee to deliver, but I'll see you around. Pretty good sweet potato fries, huh? Mm -hmm. So you probably want me to tell Moose? Mm -hmm. Hey Moose, the Blaine kids like the fries. <laughs> Moose, the usual for Todd. And the Blaine kids still like your fries. Todd, stop staring at my butt. Huh? Oh, <clears throat> I'm not. I. I just, I just dropped my fork. Oh, it must have been one of those rubber forks, because I didn't hear it. Jeez, Jackie. I'm sorry, okay? It's Tug, you remember Richard Kerm? Hmm? Oh, yeah, you sat next to me in geometry. I copied off you. <laughs> You're some kind of newspaper big shot. No, not really. Okay, well, I gotta go change my pants. This one spilled coffee on me. Careful, she's one angry skirt. I didn't tell him I was copying from the girl in front of us who pretty sure was copying from him. You look great. Oh, thanks. So, uh, how's your mom? It's okay. She, uh, travels a lot. Been around the world a bunch of times. I get the occasional postcard, phone call. So she never remarried? No. I think she still hasn't gotten over dad. Look, Jackie, I, uh, I owe you an apology. No. No, you don't. Just finish that. I have to go help out a little bit. Jackie, look, be honest. Does the cilantro overpower the leaks? Moose, look who's here. Kirby? No way, man. Oh, I don't believe it. The big cheese newspaper reporter. The, uh, the gourmet chef. Yeah, ever think you'd hear the word cilantro coming off these lips? <laughs> okay, hey, Moose, remember what you used to do when you were creaming an opposing quarterback? <laughs> oh, hey, my fans will wait. <laughs> Later. Hey, really good to see you, man. You too, buddy. I always love the Moose call. So, uh, catch me up. Okay, um, let's see. Graduated, <laughs> went to Europe to find myself. Found myself, and then I put off college to help my folks with the restaurant, and then they retired to Arizona. So that was the end of Jackie's law career, and then about five years ago, I got married. And six months later, divorced. I'm sorry. Jackie, I still feel awful about what I did. Uh, Richard, that was a lifetime ago. I'm okay with it. Remember this place? Yeah, how could I forget? We made out in here until we had icicles grown from our noses. Ah! Ah! Oh my God. What, there was a chicken? I, I have been rehearsing what I was gonna say to you for 11 years and it was really smart and, and tough and heartfelt. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I deserve it. No, it is not okay. Oh, wow. That is a nasty gash. Oh, I can't believe what I did. Ah. 
Uh-uh. No, 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 it's, it's okay. I just need something cold to stop the bleeding. Mm. Oh, God. It feels much better, thank you. Let me make it up to you. Come by later, I will bake you a meatloaf. You, you still always like her meatloaf. You remember? Yeah, of course. Still with the uh, peas and pearl onions? And mushroom gravy. Um, hey, do you know this guy, Dick, who works at the Eagle? Yeah, he's new in town. He's a sweetheart. A uh, meatloaf lover like you. What about him? Hmm, nothing. I, I really am sorry. All right. I think it's already stopped bleeding. Hey, where's uh, Doc Farley? You're looking at him. Richard? Jeff Farley. We went to high school together. Jeff, hey. <laughs> wow, look at you, huh? Doctor, just like your old man. Yeah, I took over his practice. How about you? Reporter, right? Journalist. How's that going for you? <sighs> Oof, he... Oh, yeah. Let's take a look. Yeah, whoa, yeah, stitches for you. How'd that happen? Ah, uh, you know, I was getting out of the car and boom, I hit its roof. <laughs> really? There you are, gentlemen. Enjoy. You hungry? Let's see if we can get something for you. <laughs> hey, you watch it, buddy. You're abusing your bell privileges. You're not the first to tell me that. How's your head? It's good. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it was, um... So where's this meatloaf I've been deprived of for 11 years? In due time. Your turn to catch me up. Richard Kerm, the missing years. Make me proud. Lies or truth? Truth. Well, uh, simply put, my life hasn't turned out the way I thought it would. Oh, well, welcome to the club. We meet once a month in the dues are tax deductible. It's the birthday boy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kermy. Do you think I'd forget your 30th? I'm trying to. Okay, we'll stop whining and blow him out. In me love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I would like to make a toast. To Richard, who as a youth had the cojones to leave Glenville to pursue his dream. To the return of the prodigal son. Here, here. It's good to be home. Happy birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. Said you can't go home again. Anna, look at you. You haven't changed a bit. Neither have you. So what are you doing these days? Teaching history at the high school. Keeps the kids away from the television for seven hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you idolized J.D. Salinger. I was an Ayn Rand groupie. We would argue. About which one was responsible for screwing up America's youth. Yes. <laughs> I would love if you could talk to my class about how the power of the media is responsible for screwing up America's youth. I'm really not sure if I'm staying. Yeah. You let me know. Yeah. Good seeing you again, Richard. You too. Frozen chickens can do a lot of damage. I agree. It's all over town already, huh? Nope. Sorry about earlier. I didn't mean to freak you out. <laughs> She's really something, isn't she? I don't But then you always did like feisty women. Okay. Game over. You've thought a lot about her over the last 11 years. Okay. 
Can you stop this now? Maybe you're getting a second chance. If she didn't feel anything for you, why did she dent your head? Hey, Jackie, can you believe birthday boy did that? Getting out of his car today? Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> occupation clutz. <laughs> How awkward is this? <laughs> My old boyfriend meets my new boyfriend. Thinking what you could have known what you should. I'm sorry about Jackie. Jeez, what, you got mufflers on your shoes? Ah, uh, look, I, I got caught up in some silly romantic fairy tale for five seconds, but it's over. You know, and I, I don't know what I was expecting to find coming back here anyways. What were you hoping to find? Well, certainly not you. I mean, what's with the neighbor jacket, man? Those things went out of style in the 60s. They came back in the spring of 2035. Aren't they expecting you back at the nut house? It was painful for me, too. What was? Reliving that moment with Jackie. All right. Who are you? Don't you know? I'm you, Richard. What are you talking about? Well, the 55-year-old you. Happy birthday. To us. <laughs> oh, you're me, huh? Well, and tell me how you got here. Oh, wait, no, no, let me guess. It was a, uh, a time warp. Maybe a <laughs> wrong turn at the Twilight Zone? None of those. <clears throat> I was alone in my personal unit, regretting decisions I'd made in my life and wishing I could somehow rectify them when I inadvertently plugged the protein ionizer into the carbohydrate port of my nourishment delsonator and <laughs> into the past. At least I think that's what happened. Anyway, here I am. <sighs> uh-huh. And, uh, I imagine that if I told anybody what you just said, that they'd... they'd probably have you committed. Or you. I'd deny it. Of course. But how would you explain having the same name? What did Ben Bradley call Woodward and Bernstein in our favorite movie? All the President's Men? Woodstein. Hi, Dick Woodstein. So, you went to the cemetery today. Does the word stalker mean anything to you? I'm not a stalker. It's just the first thing I did when I got here. Hey, you know what? Don't bring my father into your disease, okay? He's my father, too. Hey, what about our birthmark? The one that's shaped like a horse's head. Huh. <laughs> How did you know that? Okay, I get it. You're friends with my mother. and yeah, She's still telling people that story, huh? I really miss Mom. Okay, you know what? That's it. It's time for you to go, crazy old man. Get out of here. Okay, I was hoping I could avoid this, but obviously I can't. Okay, what are you doing? You know what, dude? That's it. I am calling the cops. Ta-da! Our birthmark. Oh, my God. You remember what we nicknamed her? Buttermilk? <laughs> I'm out of here. Coil wire. I pulled it. Okay. You know what? This can't be happening. This is not an acceptable concept. I mean, it's not. Uh, it's not physically possible, is it? You know, there's got to be a reasonable explanation for this. Okay. Oh, okay. Tell me this. If you are me, and you're not, then why are you working in the classified department when there is a job opening for a journalist? I knew you were coming back. I was coming back. I don't know why I'm even talking to you. Besides, it's the way it actually happened. The way what happened? My life, 25 years ago. Your life now. The frozen chicken, for example. I still have that scar right here. Okay, look, I don't know who you are, what you are, or why you're here. To help you. To help me what? Not to do what you're about to do, what you've always done. Run away, bail out, quit. Admit it. We've quit on some very good jobs and some good women. Remember what Dad always said. 
It does no good to bury your head in the sand because your butt is still sticking up in the air. staying here too oh what a great morning sleep well dumb question come on we'll get you some caffeine at the office i better drive wow i haven't driven one of these dinosaurs in quite a while you'll never believe what you're going to be putting into your tank in about 20 years <laughs> rice problem is instead of importing oil from the middle east we're addicted to rice from the far east you can't win Hi. I work in the mailroom. Shouldn't you be in school? No. First class is trig. What a waste of time, right? I mean, anybody actually asks you what the cotangent of X is lately? I doubt it. Besides, I'm gonna quit school as soon as I turn 16. Three more months, then I work here full time. I quit school when I was 16. In fact, that's when I started working in the, in the mailroom. Ricky. Ricky. I love newspapers. I read like five, maybe six a day, cover to cover. See, I don't read them online, and I hate blogs. I'm gonna be a real journalist. Okay. I'm gonna ask you a question, and I want an honest answer. Okay, shoot. What's your favorite movie? Oh, easy. Borat. That guy cracks me up. Thank you. But the flick that got me hooked on this business? All the President's Men. This guy's really dusted Nixon. Who told you to say that? Nobody. Okay, take off your pants. What? Come on, take them off. Let me see buttermilk. Let's go. Come on. <sighs> no buttermilk. Nope. So Ricky is not the 15-year-old me. Now that would really be freaky. But no, he's not you, not me. Total coincidence. So, Richard. Have you decided on your first story yet? Uh, well... Well, don't we need another story on Sir Save-A-Lot? Who? Giant discount chain. Town's voting in a couple of days whether to let him put one up at the end of Main Street. I like it, Dick. Thanks, Del. It'd be a good way for you to become reacquainted with Glenville, Richard. Talk to the locals. See how they feel about the possibility of this cancer invading their town. Oh, whoa, whoa, town boy. Just, we're not looking to start trouble. This is only a store. Jeez, you two are cut from the same cloth. Just keep it balanced, Richard. Now, you look. Don't pay any attention to Dell. He's a total plur, which is slang for wuss in about 20 years. Just get in there and dig out a story. Take no prisoners. Walter's kid. <laughs> Look how they grow up. I gave him his first haircut. Yep. And if you're looking for the missing piece of your ear, there's a lost and found box in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the story he did for the New Hampshire Clarion? You were a pit bull. I'm not doing those kind of stories anymore. Your dad would have been proud. May he rest in peace. Amen. Actually, I'm doing a, a story for the Eagle. Yeah, what do you guys think about Sir Savalon? Best thing that'll ever happen to us. Us? Who died in a pointy to my mouthpiece? So Save Lot's got a hardware department. I have a hardware store. Doesn't take a genius to figure out what that means. Ah, don't listen to him. So Save Lot's gonna jack us right out of this economic slump. Can thank the new mayor for that. Yeah. Mm. Been in office for less than a year. Already done wonders for morale around here. Hey, are we here to draft or yap? All right. Rita, your pick. I'm going with Kevin Morse. A loser. According to my scouts, he cries when he fumbles. Yeah, because he's 10 years old, Chuck. Hey, what do you guys know about this guy, Dick, works over at the Eagle? All right, you're up. Chuck. Larry. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Mark. No, no, no. Morris. What? Morris. <sighs> Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. 
Connor. Jackie. Hey, uh, I'm looking for the mayor. And you found her. Then why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to brag. Your dad was mayor for... Yep, for 15 years. I don't think the town wanted to bother changing the nameplate, so just a teeny weeny bit of pressure on me. Hmm. Uh, Dell asked me to do a story on Sir Save a Lot coming here. Uh oh. Yeah, don't worry, it'll be a fluff piece. Richard Kern, a fluff piece. A kinder, gentler Richard Kern. <sighs> Five acres, owned by the town, non income bearing turkey for years. We sell it to Sir Save a Lot and Bingo, instant cash flow. Mm. And the best part, once the store is up and running, we project a 20% increase in tourist traffic to Glenville and a 15% increase in revenue and jobs. And that's just in the first year. Huh? Hey guys, don't forget the town meeting on Friday night. We need to support. Richard, this Sir Save a Lot deal is the biggest thing I have ever done in my life. And I have never been more sure of anything. So, go ahead, fire away. Ask the tough questions. Okay. Why didn't you tell me you had a boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, thanks for not telling him about the... Nothing sick him? Uh, yeah, it's no problem. So is it serious? I don't know. Maybe. I'm happy for you. Hey, honey. Hey. Mm. How's the head, Richard? Uh, it's better. Yeah. Well, gotta go. Got a story to do. Be gentle. You're thinking of leaving again. Why would you take out of my car this time, the engine? Nothing, but leaving now is a big mistake. Why is that? Because you're gonna marry her. Jackie. Now get back to work on that story of yours. apologize for before and explain why I forget it. It's no big deal. You probably just had one of those uh, senior moments. Question, can you come talk to my staff at the high school newspaper? The Oak? Is that still around? I'm the editor. Oh. Well, actually, I, I promised Anna Palindromo we'd talk to her literature class. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're making a move on Miss Palindrome. No, wrong. <clears throat> Okay, okay, I will come and talk to your staff, but now disappear, please. I have to finish this story. I'll set it up. Another country heard from. What? This is your story? Yeah, so save a lot's a winner. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves Mayor Jackie. Did you check out Sir Save a Lot's track record? Nope. Did you talk to any town officials at other store sites? Nope. What about impartial parties? I believe I'm doing this story. Then do it right. Scrape, dig, be tenacious. You call yourself an investigative journalist? As a matter of fact, I do. And you know what I found? Exhibit A. This is a description of my birthmark. Part of the public record from Glenville Memorial Hospital, where you got it. I haven't been to Glenville Memorial since I was born. Yeah, right. And what about Laszlo? Who? A tattoo artist at Higgy's Pawn Shop. He tattooed your butt with <laughs> exhibit A. Dude, your charade is over. Laszlo? Laszlo's a stoner. His mind is shot. He can't even remember who's president. And this is not a tattoo. Then what were you doing in a tattoo parlor? I was at the pawn shop. Remember Dad's watch? The one he left us in his will? The one we hawked so we could buy Jackie the ring we gave her before we left and never came back. Okay, how do you... I went to see if it was still there so I could buy it back, but it wasn't. Okay. Okay, well, show me some ID. Show me a, a, a birth certificate or driver's license. What's your social security number? 374 to the 10th power. 
The whole system was reorganized. You've got to believe me. You know what I believe? I believe I'm taking this story. I'm going to walk into Dell's office, hand it to him, and I'm going to get in my truck, jam the pedal to the floor, and never look back. What about Jackie? Jackie has a life. I, on the other hand, have got to find one, and I suggest you do the same. You can't go now. Already gone. Let's go. Time to give the talk of the oak. Place looks and smells the same. <laughs> I carved that my sophomore year. Who's JP? Never mind. I'll find out. This is my staff. Hey, guys. Uh, well, where to start? Um, I covered sports my freshman year. You wrote that piece on the football team, about how they're absent for midterm exams, yet somehow still pass them. The whole team was put on probation for a year. It's pretty impressive. Okay, have you been talking to Dick? <laughs> is everybody in this town nuts? <laughs> Look, it's my job to know everything. Now, isn't it true that you've never lasted more than a year at a newspaper? I'm writing a story on you. When you're mining for the truth, usually somebody gets hurt. Yeah, someone usually does. Which doesn't mean it's right. Man, you're really getting soft, aren't you? You asked me here for my advice about journalism. Well, here it is. Stay in school. Graduate. Go to college. You know, get married. Have two and a half kids. Live a quiet an uncomplicated life, preferably as an accountant. Most of all, stay out of the newspaper business. It has very little to do with the truth. Excuse me. Hello? What? Okay, no, calm down. Calm down, I'll be right there. I gotta go. But, Dell, I put it on your desk. Oh, maybe the cockroaches carried it off and are editing it as we speak. Just get me the story. Where did you get that? I found it. Okay, I found it on Dell's desk. This is completely one-sided, all pros and no cons. One would think you were on Sir save -a payroll. I'm embarrassed to have my name on this. Your name? Okay, now I get it. You're a frustrated old newspaper hack who was forced to retire, so you decided to take it out on me. If that's what you want to believe, fine. Just do your research first. I'm out of here. You can't leave. We have never walked out on an unfinished story in our lives. Quit saying we. Please follow me when we were sick. And where in Iowa? And how much of a drop off? That's not bad. Uh, how many stores in New Hampshire? Yeah, no, that's not enough to raise a red flag. Okay, now thanks for your help, Christy. Yeah, now you give my best to the news hounds of the Herald. Yeah, next time I'm in town, I promise. Okay, yeah, take care. her for a minute. I'll be back. Sir, so save a lot. What about it? Well, I'm maybe being a little overcautious, but I think you should, uh, that you should, um, do the what?
stay or go? Go. Hey, morning, Kermy. I got sweet pea pancakes on the griddle. Sounds good, Moose. I need to talk to Jackie. <sighs> Where is she? Oh, she's at City Hall in her office. Showing off her engagement ring. Jeff sprung it on her last night. Festival? Get out of my car. But we love the dunk tank, remember? She is engaged. I never said this was going to be easy. Well, if you knew, why didn't you warn me? Because I knew you'd skip town. Yeah, like I'm doing right no, now. Please, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Get off my car. If you gently stroke the back of her neck with your forefinger, she purrs like a kitten. Get off. Why? Well, my computer was stolen, and that cup was sitting on top of it, so the thief would have had to remove it to get my computer. Hey, that's pretty good. He's not a top-notch investigative journalist or nothing. We haven't had a theft in two years. I'm going to put a rush on this. Oh, could you take my fingerprints? They're also on the cup, so wouldn't want you arresting me for stealing my own computer. I'll take you down to the station. Handcuffs not necessary. trying to do I know I shouldn't have kissed you and I was out of line Dell showed me your story you said you were gonna do a fluff piece <laughs> your facts are misleading they don't have a thing to do with Glenville Jackie I never Cross Bridge, Kansas Scott Falls Iowa I mean of course these places can't support us or save a lot and a local mom-and-pop store they have more chipmunks than humans this is Long Island there's plenty of business for everyone and we spent 15 grand on a feasibility study thank God he's not publishing your story Jackie I never gave the story to Dell. I threw it in the trash. It's just that the Sir Save a Lot vote is tomorrow night, and a story like that could have spooked everybody. You should have come to me from my side of it. I tried to, but you were too busy showing off your engagement ring. Oh, so that's what this is about. What is? You're trying to sabotage me because you're jealous. Jealous? Oh, please, get over yourself. <sighs> okay. Look, maybe I'm a little bit jealous. You know, seeing you with that ring, it was pretty difficult. But I never meant to hurt you with that story. And I swear, I threw it in the trash. What did you expect, Richard? To, to waltz into Glenville after 11 years and little Jackie's just gonna drop everything and make a beeline into your arms? I am settled and I am happy and I have finally found somebody good in my life. So please, just stay out of it.
Jackie. Jackie. Hello, Richard. Hi, Anna. How many are going? Oh, we just found it. I just picked up a copy of Dr. Shivago at the Book Nook. Two people madly in love, being pulled apart by fate. It's tragic. But for some reason, I like it. I'm going home with Boris Pasternak here and lighting the fireplace to get me through a cold Russian winter. Care to join me? Um, no, I got to, uh... You stood up my class to talk to the school newspaper. You owe me, Richard Kerr. I feel like I want to admit something to you, but I'm very shy. Well, alcohol makes me very non-judgmental, so please go ahead. I had an enormously frustrating crush on you in high school. You looking for me, handsome? Always. Congratulations, by the way. Thanks. It's a big deal. I mean, finding that one person. Yeah, yeah, I know. Has Richard been here? <clears throat> Were you ever married? <laughs> no. No. You? Only to the career. Mm. Well, I, uh, I'm thinking about getting a divorce from my career. Why? It hasn't been a very fulfilling marriage. Do you get lonely? Yeah, sometimes when, uh, when I think about being lonely, which is why I try not to. You? Uh, I've had my shall we say, dalliances, um, which have satisfied me only momentarily, but uh, in general, sure. I guess as long as I'm the mayor, they'll compare me to my father. It's a tough act to follow. Dads usually are. What did yours do? Electrician. He died when I was 11. I'm sorry. Well, he used to say, sometimes life is like the blind spot in your rearview mirror. Richard was also 11 when his dad died. It was a sad day. The two of you were close, huh? Used to be. I'm even talking about him. It's strange. Richard's dad was also an electrician. And you both have the same birthday and the same name. Weird. Yeah, strange. But you, I like. Too bad you weren't 25 years younger. Yeah, too bad. But you know, Richard's a good guy. He's just confused. Aren't we all? Well, I better find him. Thanks for the coffee. Listen, I saw him outside the restaurant earlier. He was talking to Anna. She got into his car. <laughs> well, I should go. Richard, I can't let you drive in this condition. I promise you I'll be okay. I've got a guest room. You can stay here. No, um, no, I'm fine. <clears throat> Richard, give me your keys. No, I'm just... You know what? I'm, I'm just going to walk it. 
It's a couple of miles. I... Yeah. You know, the fresh air will do me good. Um, thank you for tonight. <clears throat> Oh, jeez. You're drunk. Yeah. So what happened between you and Anna? Oh, what? You don't know? I don't remember. Hmm. Remember this? Oh, uh, yeah. Sure, I remember that. You don't, do you? <laughs> oh, the 55-year-old me. Listen, when you get to be my age, you won't remember everything either, no matter how much zimunium you take. So, so what? Zimunium. It's a memory drug. It hits the market in about 2016. <sighs> Maybe I need some zimunium because I don't remember giving Del my Sir save a lot story. I thought I threw it in the trash. You did. That's where I found it. You know, you're not doing Jackie any favors, I'm trying to protect her from the inevitable. What does that even mean? Well, it no, may... no. I don't want to know. Rita, what's going on? Whoa! Are you transporting narcotics? No, of course not. Ah, relax. I'm just staying in shape. I got the fingerprint results. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. I know what it says, and uh, I'm sorry I wasted your time. Oh, it was exciting for a while. Thought I had myself a perp. Turns out your prints are all over that cup. Just mine? Yep. Perfect match. How about a zesty Mexican omelet, Chuck? Comes with ceviche, hand-rolled corn tortillas. It's a real morning pick-me-up. Okay, Moose, but hold the jalapenos. Reflux. Can do. Hey, Chuck. Moose, have you seen Dick? Uh, no, not since last night. Poncho special? 86 sinus cleaners? 10-4. Uh, Jackie's working in the kitchen today. She's feeling pretty lousy. She gave the ring back to Jeff last night. Why? Richard, you don't know she's still in love with you? Moose, I want to change my order. What about the quesadillas? With sausage. And guacamole. Why are you here, Richard? Jackie, I didn't want to be the cause of you guys breaking up. Why are you up. here? Are you hungry? Is that it? Jackie, come on, please. Look. What, the school marm? She didn't make you breakfast this morning? Or the two of you couldn't get out of bed? Hey. No. Did she meet your expectations? Jackie, listen to me. Ah! Nothing happened, Jackie. Okay. So, they said the on-call doctor will be in to review your x-rays. Richard, I am so, so sorry. My temper has been horrible lately. Oh, just lately? And... Yeah, I remember this uh, fifth grader. Um, she slugged the school nurse when she was getting a flu shot. It was crazy. I... Jackie? I am. Um, I'm going to wait outside. No, no. Please stay. So, Richard, what happened this time? Brushing your teeth? It was my fault. I bet. Ah. Yeah, just as the x-ray is confirmed, mild fracture. Seemed you were looking for a relationship, Jackie. If I knew you wanted a piñata, I would have bought you one. Jeff, that's not fair. Fair? Hey. Ah. It's a lateral though, right? Jeff. Yeah, I'm sorry, Richard. 
Can I come over tonight? I just want to talk. I don't think that's a good idea. Like you owe me at least that. Bye. Please excuse us, Richard. Uh, you know what? Uh, better yet, um, Jackie, can you excuse us for a minute? Please? So you got a new stethoscope. What are you talking about? Uh, <clears throat> replace the one you lost. Look what you get that. Okay, here's the deal, Doc. Number one, you're not gonna go anywhere near Jackie's house tonight or any other night. Number two, if you ever, ever hurt her by telling her about your little indiscretion, I will do a character assassination piece about you in the Eagle that will leave you with one option for practicing medicine, proctology, at the Suffolk County Petting Zoo. You understand? You plurb. with a goofy grin. I don't know. I'm a happy fool. So are you going to tell me what you said to Jack? I told you. We uh, just went over my x-rays. I feel so badly for him. Mm. <laughs> I forgot how much I miss this place. It's hard to appreciate when you're a kid. It's hard to appreciate a lot of things. <laughs> you know, speaking of rings, um, whatever happened to that pimple of a diamond I gave you? Now let me guess, you traded it for a bag of peanuts. No, no one would give me a bag of peanuts. So I buried it in the attic somewhere. <laughs> but I do have this. Jackie, that's my dad's old watch. Mm -hmm. How did you... When you left for the New Hampshire Clarion, I found out it was at Hickey's Pawn Shop, so I bought it. It was gonna be your wedding gift. Thank you. <laughs> Jackie, I pawned the watch so I could buy you the ring. Well, I guess the circle's complete. Richard, why didn't you come back? I don't know. I mean, God knows I've thought about it a ton of times. I just kind of keep coming back to I was 19. That's what 19 year olds do. Now I'm 30. I'm all out of excuses. You're not going to hit me, are you? <laughs> No. You are me. I'm you, but we are us. So you finally believe me. I, I can't even begin to understand it, but why not? Our fingerprints match. I know, it's great, right? I mean, well, you know what happened, but I, I have so many questions for you. When you were 30, did you also have someone like you? Uh, and, and like, does this happen to everybody? Why me? I can't. She kept the ring. I mean, of course, you, you already know that, too. I'm, I'm getting used to this. Look at this. Dad's watch. Yeah. Wait, shouldn't, shouldn't you already have this? It's a long story. Well, well, tell me everything. What happens to me? I can't do that. It wouldn't be fair. You have to live your life. Oh, come on. Tell me something you can. Uh, well, uh, okay. Televisions and computer screens are holograms now. What about global warming? Still no answer. Oh. Well, uh, what, what else you got? Tell, uh, how long have you and Jackie been married? What's she doing now? Let's talk in your office. Okay. <clears throat> Donald Brickhouse, vice president of acquisitions for Sir Save-A-Lot, 
is going to appoint a committee of business experts to try to reverse what he calls a disastrous problem. What's this got to do with Jackie? What problem? The bankrupting of small towns across the country. Again with this? Sir Save-A-Lot opens a huge store which sucks the life out of the local merchants who go out of business, causing an exodus from the town, causing Sir Save-A-Lot to go belly up. Instant ghost town. Go ahead, Bill. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because you wouldn't believe me until you believed that I was you. Okay. Let's give this Brookhouse a call. We can't. Why not? Because he won't be VP of acquisitions for another three years. Excuse me? Right now, Donald Brickhouse works in the shipping department. They promote very fast. It's her save a lot. Well, then how does he know about stores going out of business and taking small towns with them? He doesn't. It hasn't happened yet, but it will. In about five years. That's my source. A, a guy who doesn't even know he's a source yet. You know, as a journalist, this is exactly what I'm trying to get away from. Sometimes you have to work with what you got. I need some time to digest this. There is no time. The town votes tonight. You've got to tell Jackie. What am I going to tell her? That Glenville's not going to be around in five years? Based on what facts? <sighs> you know, things were just starting to go really well for Jackie and me. I liked you much better when you were just a nut. This is too hard. I know what's going on in that head of ours. I think there's some place we have to go. I was angry at him too. I'm not angry at him. He didn't leave Richard. He died. Yeah, what am I, an idiot? It's not about intelligence. What you think up here and what you feel down here, two completely different things. Down here is always more powerful. You know, if he was still alive, things would be different. You know, he'd kick me in the butt and say, dummy, think about what you're doing. Maybe that's why I'm here. <laughs> and that would make you what? Your own father figure? Sounds corny. But the day you stop running is the day you'll start moving forward. You know, somebody died because of something I wrote. Something that might not be entirely true. Hey, I know. Recalling that day makes me sick to my stomach. You're asking me to do it again. If you don't, a town will die. And if I do, I alienate Jackie for good. I gotta talk to you. Can that, Richard? After the vote. No, before the vote, Jackie. It's too important to wait. Sorry, it'll have to. <laughs> I don't even know why we're bothering to vote. No one in town's even against it. Then let me introduce myself. No, you don't count, Chuck. You're against everything. Not true. Did you or did you not boo Santa Claus at last year's Christmas parade? Hey, Santa Claus is not a woman. Take your seats, everybody. Thank you for coming, everybody. I don't need to tell you how important this is for Glenville. Not only are we voting on our present, but more importantly, our future. And blah, blah, blah. You know what? I'm getting sick and tired of my own voice on the subject. So let's get this done. As has been the custom here for over a century, we will vote by a show of hands. And I do not want to catch anyone raising both hands. <coughs> uh, what if you have more than one personality? In your case, Tug, don't bother raising any hands. Okay. Those in favor of Sir save -a uh, Can I say something? Um, before you all vote, consider this. Sir save -a -lot is a relatively new chain with almost no track record. Richard, what are you doing? Let him speak. I mean, do we want to be guinea pigs? You know, no one knows what kind of effect a store that big will have on our small town. Our town? You don't even live here. But I was born here. 
I grew up here. I mean, you all knew my father. He had a saying, it does no good to bury your head in the sand because your butt is still sticking up in the air. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not saying that all big box chain stores are a problem, but so far, sir, Save a lot has shown some signs of being one. Maybe he's right. Yeah, maybe he's right. I sell fishing worms, Will. So save a lot gonna sell worms? Probably not. You can corner the market on me. Can I talk to you for a sec? Yeah. Jackie, Glenville is gonna go under. Proof. Give me proof. Where are your figures? Who are your sources? I don't have anything concrete yet. Why are you doing this, Richard? Look, this is gonna sound bizarre, okay? So please, just keep an open mind. Okay, look, suppose you knew what was going to happen years before it actually happened. And by having this knowledge, you could change things. I mean, things that would be disastrous. Are you with me so far? You jerk. This is all my fault. Yes, listen to the man. Eleven years and you have not changed one bit. Anything for a story. Anything for that career of yours, no matter who it hurts. No, I have changed. Jackie, tell her. He's right. Hey. Natives are getting restless. Are we voting? No, I have to do damage control. Dell, can you reprint the feasibility study in tomorrow's paper? Sure. Front page. Okay, that should settle things, and we'll vote Monday night. All right. And nothing or no one is going to stop this from happening. Don't let him drag you into this. <sighs> He's right. That's the best you had. How are you doing? Oh. As long as you keep bringing me these, I'm a happy fool. What did you say? When? <sighs> Dickie's had a bit too much to drink. Which is why I hope I can get away with saying this without you taking a swing at me. Maybe Richard has a point. Maybe you ought to delay Sir Save a lot until all the facts are in. Dick, I like you. Leave it alone. I like you too. You're terrific. Thanks. But then you always were. <laughs> I once had a girl just like you. What happened? I ran away like a coward. So you were never married? No. I never met anyone like her again. Biggest regret of my life. Where is she now? That's a little hard to explain. You should go see her. It's never too late, you know? At least for some people. Jackie, wait. They're running some tests. Listen, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm here for Dag. He was at the restaurant last night. He had a little bit too much to drink. I drove him home. He's such a sad, lonely man. What do you mean? He told me about this girl. 
The only girl he ever loved. He told you about that? Mm-hmm. And what's sad is he never married her, and he's regretted it ever since. He never married her? No. He's been alone his entire life. So he's never been married? That's what he said. Excuse me, are you a friend of Dick Woodstein's? Yeah, we're, uh, we're joined at the hip. We don't have any medical records on him. Do you know if he's taking any heart medication? I don't think he has heart. Do you mind looking in his room at the Glenville Lodge? No, not at all. feeling? Fine until I saw the monitor. What's wrong with me? I don't know yet. Why didn't you show this to me? Because you would have told her. You never married Jackie. Why didn't you tell me I would marry her? To keep you here so you would. When I was your age, when I came back to Glenville, I didn't stay. I left. The day Jackie got engaged to Jeff, I couldn't handle it. And I never saw her again until now. I've led a pretty unhappy and uh, undistinguished life since I was your age. And the worst part of it is, I've gone through it alone. So when, by some miracle, I found myself back here, I knew I had a chance to change things for Jackie. And you. So what about this? Are you gonna make it? I don't know. I left, you stayed, everything's different now. I'm in uncharted territory, and so are you. Honestly, I don't even care anymore whether I make it. Well, you know what? I do. You know, I don't want to check out when I'm 55 years old, okay? It, it, you know, it, I don't want to know when I check out. That's too creepy. Hi. Good news. A test show, no heart attack. We think you had a vasovagal response, probably caused by stress. So, just get some rest, and we'll have you out of here by tonight. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheer up, man. We're gonna live. Big deal. Jackie won't. Where are you going? 
I'm gonna show her this obituary. You can't do that. Why not? Like you said, it's creepy to know when you're gonna die. Leave it alone. No, I'm not gonna just leave it alone, okay? Even if we can't have her. I'm gonna do my best to try and make sure that she and Glenville have a long and happy life. What are you gonna do? Say hi, Jackie, I've got an important message from the future. She thinks you're crazy as it is. Well, then I got nothing to lose, right? Hey, come on! You know what? You are so full of crap. Oh, you came here to change me? Yeah, that's a joke. You haven't changed. Look at you. Yeah, you're 55 years old and you're still a quitter. <sighs> These are for Dick Woodstein. <sighs> Is it from Dell and the guys at the Eagle? It's <laughs> from Ricky. Mm. Um, the guys from the barber shop. You know. And these are the folks you want to quit on? Okay, what are we supposed to do now? We do what we do best. see the light of day. Oh, boo-hoo. You know, you whiners don't know how lucky you are. You've been able to write what you want on any issue, get it published by a real newspaper read by a big, intelligent audience who can actually appreciate it. Not some high school crow magnons whose main interest in life is what Lady Gaga is going to wear in her next video. It's Sunday, isn't it? All day. You know the code? It's so predictable. It's the principal's date of birth. Wow, this place looks exactly the same. Wait, you, you went to school here too? Yeah, right around the corner. I carved my initials. Mm, guys, you got work to do. You crazy? Okay, let's go sell some papers. Uh, the oak is free, actually. So I, I, I know it's a, it's a figure of speech. Right. Once upon a time, there was a small town, a town so beautiful, it was as if you were looking at a picture postcard. In this town lived a small boy. Growing up, everything the little boy did was connected to the town and the people who lived there. He felt warm and safe. He expected it would be that way for the rest of his life, 
But something happened that changed everything. For the first time, the boy felt lost, abandoned, out of place. So when he came of age, he packed up, made promises to the girl he loved that would be impossible to keep, and left the town and the people that were such an important part of his life, maybe to fill the void, maybe to create his own destiny, maybe to try and forget. He didn't really know why. What he found were other towns, main streets, other cities, the next one looking like the last one. And the people were not like they were in his hometown. All was in a hurry, but seemingly going nowhere. Crowded together, but looking lonely. Soon he discovered that he had become one of them. And whatever he was looking for, he would not find until he came back to the very place he ran away from and the people that helped form him as a human being. He was surprised and comforted to find that his town was exactly as it was when he left. When you leave for a long time, you forget what home means to you, what you've been missing, until you come back. And what I see is a town that for over a hundred years created its own destiny without compromising its personality or character. So my question to the people of Glenville is, why must Sir Savalot become a part of that destiny? Yes, change can be positive, but it can also upset the delicate balance of an entire way of life and turn something that you've loved into something indistinguishable. Or worse, shouldn't we preserve our history instead of risking its extinction? I love this town, almost in the same way I love the woman I left 11 years ago. Sometimes when you're scared, you run. But I'm not scared anymore. And now it's time for me to start preserving some of my history with the only town and the only girl I've ever loved, if they'll still have me. I urge you not to change the face of our town. Let's be the exception to the rule. Hey, Dick. Jackie? Is that you? Are you all right? Yeah. I just... I went for a walk. Richard, everybody's waiting for us at the restaurant. You called me Richard. Of course. Are you sure you're okay? <laughs> My favorite scar. I put my love brand on you for life with a frozen chicken. You remember? Hmm. Hmm. Wow. You should go for walks more often. 
We'll finish this later, big boy. We gotta go. We're late. Where are we going? You're funny. Uh, give me a minute, okay? Michael's eyes and your hairline. <laughs> Ricky, I'm so glad you could make it. Ricky, are you kidding, Mayor? I wouldn't miss this for the world. She's still the mayor? Miss what? <laughs> and you're still a wise guy, huh, Richard? Just don't ask me to pull down my pants again. <laughs> hey, Ricky, I read your story in today's Times. Brilliant, as usual. Blame it on my mentor over here. Drinks. Miss what? Moose. Happy anniversary. Meatloaf? Of course. <laughs> Are you sure you're okay? Yeah. I'm just... a happy fool. <laughs> Jackie. Do you remember a guy about uh, 25 years ago named Dick? Yeah, vaguely. I don't remember his face, but... He, he was a sweet old guy, and he liked meatloaf. And then one day, he just disappeared. Why? It doesn't matter. 25 years. What's the secret? Every day is like day one. Thank you.